So, fair warning, uh, this video got a little bit goofed because the GoPro setting was kind of on um, fast record <laughs> and I didn't know it. So I slowed it down uh, in uh, Adobe Premiere, which is what I used to make my videos. So that being said, everything is there. It might just be a little faster than normal, which could be a good thing because I tend to drag things out. Uh, anyway, this video is about how I, uh, people have been asking me recently since they saw some of these things that I've been building with the rust, how I created the textures and the layering uh, in my rust effect in my metal aging. And, I'll, and in this video, I'm gonna show you, I use some cheap, you know, Walmart acrylic paints, some sponges, some washes uh, of varying intensity. Uh, and, and really that's what I, I use to do the aging. The rust is actually another uh, product that uh, is is uh, Vallejo pigments uh, that I use, but the actual aging and stuff of the, uh, you know, like the door like this here, uh, which is what I cover in this video, you know, uh, everything that's not rust colored is is done with stippling and sponges, uh, and and this is a 3D printed door that I modeled uh, and modeled in Fusion 360, uh, and. Another example of the aging, uh, not the rust, but the, the the metal aging on the tank is done with Walmart acrylics and a wet sponge. <laughs> so, and you can kind of see, a busted fingernail, uh, you can see, you know, all in here, this nice blue, that's a coat of, um, you know, I airbrushed that paint on there. Uh, it's a mix of white uh, with a drop of black and a drop of blue. Um, and uh, until I get that kind of off-white, like bluish kind of metal kind of look. Um, that's a technical ratio, bluish metal look. <laughs> anyway, and here's another one uh, that I did. Uh, same thing, you can see the stippling in here, but it adds the layering uh, to the, see if this camera will focus on here. Let me hold it still. Uh, it adds the uh, layering in there to make it look like there is, you know, uh, it's got a metal look to it. And anyway, so in the video, uh, like I say, we're covering how I did the door. Um, it's sped up and that could be a good thing. So uh, without, you know, dragging it out any longer <laughs> and making a 20 minute intro and a 10 minute video, uh, let's get right to it. All right, let's get into this. So here are three examples of things that I used to uh, the same technique with the stippling technique. After I lay down my base coat color of paint, I stipple with sponges. Let's take a look in this video at how we do the stippling. All right, here we've got a door that I 3D printed. Got some uh, Walmart paints and I'm just adding some water to it to get a nice thinned out version of the black paint straight from the bottle. Um, and I want, it's always better to start out really light because you can build up. Uh, what's important is that you start out light and the size of the sponge pour. There's a few different sponges on my table that you see there. Some of them have bigger pours. Some of them have really small pours. Uh, the kind of that works really great for small surfaces um, are the grout sponges that you get from Home Depot. Uh, they're a really fine, small poured uh, sponge and they work great. Dab that stuff on there. In whatever patterns that you like, keep a dry sponge on hand. So if you ask, you know, happen to get a little bit too much on, you can knock it back with the dry sponge and it's okay. Look at that. Just like that. Sometimes you get a little bit more water on there than you want. Just get a dry sponge and dab it off. And, uh, and, and that's all it is to it. See, we start out real light and then I'm adding some, some wash down inside the uh, hinges and things down in there just to, to darken some of that up. Uh, but it won't really make it dark right now. Um, but I didn't want it just to be plain, you know, base coat color that I had on there. I wanted some some wash in there also, so I added it with, with the uh, paintbrush. Then we do the same thing with some gray. Um, mix that up in there, dab my sponge in there, wring out all the water, <laughs> dab it in there, and we'll stipple on the straight gray. Um, and if it gets too dark, I reach for a dry sponge and I knock it back with the dry sponge. It's really, really fun. It's really, really simple. And by varying the type of sponge that you use and the intensity of the wash, you create lots of layers that make it look like 
you know, this could be a, you know, a layered metal door with lots of different texture in it, even though all it is is a piece. It's just a resin print with stippled on varying colors of wash. <laughs> so that's how we kind of make the illusion of, you know, there being a lot of layers to it. See that? There's some darker and lighter uh, grays and blacks, and there's a varying size of stippled pattern from the different sponges that I have. And, you know, and that's all there is to that part of it. Here, we're going to get some of, I'm going to wet some of this, and we're going to put in some of these pigment, uh, these Vallejo pigment powders to create some of the rust. Uh, and it's important here to have very uh, various size paint brushes, some really small ones, you know, uh, a nice, you know, soft brush is fine. And uh, let me text somebody real quick. <laughs> But uh, varying size paintbrushes are what you need here uh, on, you know, some of these smaller, more, uh, you know, nooks and crannies of the door. Uh, and we'll put those powders in there uh, with a little water and then I'll stipple that out, feather it out, blend it with a sponge. And uh, it just in the end, it produces a really nice uh, looking result. And this is easy to do. I've got some black pigment that I'm using here. We're going to get it all down inside there where where dirt and grime would accumulate over the years. And uh, we'll put a little bit of water in there. You know, then I knock it back with a sponge. Uh, then I move on to this other more, uh, this is a dark, older color rust. And and then uh, same thing, I'll just use a real small uh, brush, dip it in a little bit of water, fan that out, blend it out with a small sponge. See how stippling is a great, it's a great tool to blend. It's kind of like when your wife puts the makeup on you always wonder what are they doing with that sponge tap 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 and brushing and and tapping and brushing well they're blending and that's the same thing that we're doing here we're just blending this out uh going from hard to find edges to nice uh soft feathered fanned out uh patterns and gradients of color it's it's the same thing just on a door and not a face <laughs> And in case I didn't say so, uh, please like and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate everybody's interactions uh, on all the different platforms that I'm on. It's a great, fun community to be a part of. And uh, make sure to like and subscribe so that we can all stay connected. Uh, and here, we're just, once again, man, we got this sponge. And, you know, it's nice to take the sponge and ball it up into a little tiny piece and, and press it and push it into different corners and, and crevices. You can do a lot with one one sponge. Uh, and you see I've got a, quite a few different ones there. There's some big holes in them and some really finely uh, poured ones. It's great to have a variety. And you, you just wash them out at the end and let them dry and you, you keep them in a jar. That's what I do, you know, and I've always got them. And uh, they just really, really come in handy. We're going to take some metal uh some metallic acrylic paint this is all paint from walmart except for the vallejo pigments those aren't but we're going to take a metallic uh and put it on top of that gray that we just set down so it kind of dims the metallic down a little bit because the metallic is a little bit overly metallic it, it makes it look kind of cheesy uh so we knock it back with a little gray and then i put a little gray on this uh sort of a push rod that runs the length of the door um and uh, i kind of modeled this off of a google image that I found that was really pretty cool and I thought it really fit well the design style with the uh, diorama that I'm building but uh, and you know all this is is just taking your time building up starting out really light and going darker if you need to it's like cutting hair you can always take more hair off but you can't put it back you know you can always add more color but if you put too much then you've got to kind of reset it and, and go back to white and start again so uh you know just uh there, there's no harm in going over it you know a few times uh building your um you know colors up instead of starting out really dark and saying man i started out too dark this sucks <laughs> so uh you know and and like i say this is just really inexpensive uh paint from walmart with water some sponges and these Vallejo pigments really help add the, the rust in there. Uh, you could also do this without the Vallejo pigments. The washes that I created, you could just take those washes and instead of using gray and black, uh, once you use the gray and black to lay down your, your you know, base coats of the door, then you would get, you know, your rust colors like oranges and browns and, and, and make some washes out of those and stipple those on too. And now you've got rust. I use the pigments because I think they just offer a little bit different look and I kind of 
really like the way they look. But I've stippled plenty of rust onto, uh, you know, uh, pieces of, of diorama props that I've made. There's this here that I'm using is a product called AK uh, Terrain's Streaking Grime. And what it is, it's an enamel. And you just kind of put it on there really lightly, man, because this here will take your whole paint job off. Uh, this is an enamel, and then you use a white spirit, uh, like a paint thinner remover, and you drag it back through there just very lightly because it will take all that work off that you just put on there. So uh, it's a great product, but you really have to figure how to use it the right way uh and i've i ruined a couple of pieces or parts of pieces using it because i got overly zealous with it and didn't realize that uh you know i'm using acrylic paints and that mineral spirit uh, mineral will just take all that stuff right off back <laughs> right back down to the base coat <laughs> uh, learn from my mistakes so and that's all we're doing we're just creating some streaks and some grime here uh this is a corrosion texture paste that AK uh, terrain sells. If you're the DIY kind of person, you can make that paste out of uh, water mixed with some grout uh, or a fine stucco. Uh, now we'll get out some white paint and uh, just dry brush in some highlights. And that's all it is to it, folks. Hey, like and subscribe. I appreciate you watching. Thanks a lot for bearing through the entire video with me. And we'll see you in the next one.